A reading from Luke chapter 12, verses 35 through 40. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast. So that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Greetings from my humble abode. I have been here since Sunday evening. I'm in quarantine for COVID. Many people have asked, and I wanted to let everyone know, my family and I are doing fine. My wife and kids are recovered from COVID, and I only have a few minor symptoms. Loss of smell, taste, uh, some congestion, but you could hear that, and an occasional cough and sneezes. My fever is gone and I'm starting to feel normal again. I'll miss you guys this week as you join together as a congregation to celebrate the birth of Christ on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and the first Sunday after Christmas. But I trust that you have been put in capable hands between pastors coming and Colander. Even early this year, we decided we would have a fourth Advent midweek service. Well, I, I guess plans sometimes need to be rearranged. But in lieu of a normal Advent midweek service, I wanted to share a brief sermon with you that would complete the sermon series that we started back at the beginning of the month. The sermon series is entitled, Arrival, and we discuss ways in which Jesus arrives in our lives this Advent. All the way back in December 1st, that was a while ago, wasn't it? We talked about how Jesus is the one to come, prophesied of old. In other words, the first coming of Jesus was at that first Christmas. The next week, we talked about how Jesus arrived in his word. And as Christians, we are to keep his word near and dear to our hearts. Last week, we discussed how Jesus arrives in the sacraments and how Jesus is present in the waters of baptism and the bread and wine of communion. As we approach this last Advent midweek service, with Christmas services just around the corner, we will discuss how Jesus is the one 
who will arrive. That is to say, Jesus is coming again to judge both the living and the dead. Now, I'll level with you. I, I recycled these sermons, these sermons I preached originally back six years ago as a Vicarage Advent Midweek series. However, I thought for tonight, with everything that's going on, I would write something new for you. So we're going to talk about Jesus is the one who will come, who will arrive, and let's review three points as we Christians should consider as we think about Jesus' second coming. First, his second coming is imminent. We read from Jesus, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. I often think of an insurance company who has a catchphrase. Perhaps you're familiar with it. Only pay for what you need. Now, on a certain level, you understand their logic. No need to have a platinum level of coverage for a 20-year-old junker sedan. And on the other hand, you only know how much insurance you need after disaster strikes. You'll know exactly how much the damage is after you're standing in the crater of what used to be your house. But you're not going to know that before. Likewise, I think about myself. Around a month ago, the health officials were saying, urging us actually, to to get your booster shot, whether you were young or old. My doctor's office sent me an email asking me to get my booster shot. To my credit, I did schedule a booster, but I said, I have time. I'm young. I got my two shots. I'll schedule it at a convenient time. How about December 16th? That was uh, Thursday, December 16th is when I scheduled it. If you recall that day, well, that was the first full day that my COVID symptoms started appearing. I got a test that day and, and I wasn't feeling amazing. And so I couldn't get the shot because I was feeling sick. Yes, I can get the shot sometime next month after I recover, but by waiting until December 16th, it was too late to have that booster shot do any good for me this time around. Christ's second coming is like insurance or a vaccine. If you see Christ coming in the clouds and you're not ready, well, it's too late. Christ could return before Christmas this year. And Jesus Christ calls to us saying to stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. Keep the faith and watch for his arrival. Let's go to our second point. Staying awake is hard at times, but it beats the alternative. All throughout these end times texts, Jesus gives us the command to stay awake. Hopefully you understand he's not just advising you to avoid sleep. He's telling us to keep on trusting him. I'm going to keep on with my uh, vaccine illustration. My son had his two-month checkup yesterday. Little Max is healthy all around, about average weight, above average length, a huge head. But you know what they do with those appointments, right? He got a whole battery of shots and he wasn't the same yesterday. He slept a lot. He lost his appetite. He would cry unless you held him. He was 
all around cranky and not his normal self. Maybe you can relate after you got a COVID shot or maybe a shingle shot or something similar. But the reason we give people vaccinations is because any pain or discomfort in receiving that shot is outweighed by how bad it would be to actually get the disease. I don't want my son to get polio, hepatitis, or tuberculosis. I'll take a day of, of my son being cranky over him having polio. Well, that's not even a contest, right? That's not something I need to think about. Christianity can have its moments of doubt. Maybe it's when you or a loved one gets sick. Maybe it's the, the fear when your pastor sends you an email saying, Hey guys, I had COVID last Sunday at the service. Maybe it's that moment of crisis when a grandson comes back for Christmas and has a shocking revelation. He comes out as gay. What do you do with that? How do you keep on loving him? How do you how do you get by in the dark nights of the soul that come by occasionally? Staying awake spiritually can be hard at times. Jesus reminds us a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Like the immune reaction to a vaccine, Christianity is going to have its moments of pain, suffering, and discomfort. But maybe it's more like convalescent plasma. Do you remember in the pandemic, before we had the vaccines, uh, they wanted to essentially take people who had COVID than to give their plasma to patients who were fighting COVID. The idea was you could use the, those white blood cells and those antibodies in that good blood. The person who overcame COVID would be chock full of antibodies and, and those white blood cells could, could fight COVID in the other person, right? That's how it worked. Now I want you to take that analogy and let's, let's, let's dwell on that for a minute. We struggle against sin, death, and the devil, but there's somebody who overcame it. Jesus Christ battled those forces of evil and won. On the cross, he took your sins, death, and disease, and he overcame them. On Easter, he proclaimed victory over them. Jesus' blood is a different kind of convalescent plasma. It is one that, that offers us forgiveness when we sin. It is one that wards off the devil and his temptations. It is one that strengthens us in times of trial and persecution. Yes, there may be suffering in this life, but Jesus has already taken on the lion's share of suffering for you. And he promises to give you the strength you need to get through this life. When he arrives a second time, that's when that transfusion will be complete. And we will be completely cured of sin, death, and suffering. We will no longer need to fear sickness or sorrow. The very life that flowed through the resurrected Christ on Easter will be also yours. It will also flow through you. Finally, uh, that brings us to our last point. Don't worry about Christ's second coming. Jesus tells us in our text Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table, and he will come and serve them.
you guys have been overflowing in your care and concern for me and my family. But the bottom line is, we're fine. I know not everyone has such an inconsequential encounter with COVID-19, but both Kara and I being fully vaccinated and both of us being young and healthy, COVID was mostly a road bump than anything else for us. Honestly, I have suffered more in the past two years worrying about what it might like, uh, what it might be like to get COVID than actually to have it right now. Now you might say, okay, yes, there are, there are some concerns, right? Yes, I think about the people I saw since Thursday, and I hope I didn't share COVID with anyone. To be certain, I wish I could be at Faith Lutheran Leading Services this week. Let me tell you, it's going to be weird not being there on Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day. Yeah, if we avoided the Friends Gathering that first weekend in December or, or got our Brucia shots earlier, we, we might not have to have suffered through this. We can play all these Monday, Monday morning quarterback scenarios in our head, and I'm sure you could do something similar all day, couldn't you? But what is worrying going to change about what has happened in the past 20 days? Even though I tend to be an anxious person, I have been surprised by the serenity and the peace that the Lord has given me and my family in this time. May that be my prayer for you. May that be my prayer for you, dear listener. Serenity to accept the changes that you can't, uh, serenity to accept the things you can't change, courage to change the things you can, and wisdom to know the difference. There's all sorts of things in the news headlines that would cause us concern. The latest COVID mutation, supply chain issues, and what have you. My advice is just to follow the best advice and then commend the rest of the details to the Lord's hands. Worrying isn't going to fix anything. Likewise, we don't need to be anxious about Christ's return. That's the whole point, right? Uh, uh, um, keep the faith. Listen to his word. Take an active part in Christ's body, the church, and commend all the little details into Christ's hands. Christ's second coming, in fact, is something to look forward to. Because on that day, he will make all things right. He will put a final end to evil. Merry Christmas to you all. I and my family are doing well. I miss you. I look forward to seeing you again in 2022. A blessed Advent for the few days we have left. And again, God's blessings to you. Amen.